Hello, my name is Dirk Noy, and in the second video in the speech intelligibility series, I'm going to explain the correlation between speech intelligibility and directivity controlled loudspeakers, meaning loudspeakers where you can really set the target where they're projecting the sound to. Let's look at this really beautiful space. It is easier to show the effect with a large space, uh, but the same is very true also for smaller spaces like your conference room or your living room or uh, other performing spaces that are smaller than this one. This is a beautiful concert hall in Lucerne, uh, Lake of Lucerne, the KKL Lucerne. And uh, we were commissioned to design the sound system for this space a couple of years back. And let's look, take a look at that. The hall already had a sound system, which was actually really good. It was a point source system with an STI value of 0 0.64, which is really excellent. This is a very good, very good uh, value. So the mission of the new system was certainly to retain that same level of, qu of quality. At the same time, though, the old system was really complex in the setup. A lot of manpower was used for it, meaning a lot of downtime for the venue that it couldn't be rented out because it was re reconfiguring for the next event. So the new system also needed to be quicker in the setup times. So let's look at this electroacoustical simulation model. This is the same tool that was used in the previous video of Zurich Airport. Uh, we have a three-dimensional representation of the space. We are simulating only half of it because the, the room is perfectly sym symmetrical. So it's sufficient to just look at one half basically of the room and uh, the other half is will, would be the same. We could just copy paste it over, but that's not done here. We just look at the data set from one side. This is an inside view of the same model, and you see that there are loudspeakers hung in a particular position. We, with the owners, we developed a scenario that we would invite three manufacturers, top of the line manufacturers, that would be invited to bring in their systems, hang it in a predefined position, and configure it to the best of their uh, ab abilities, and then compare those three systems. So we had system one, two, and three to listen to and to look at and to evaluate also with measurement technology. This is one of the systems that was presented uh, on in, in, the, in the hall. This is the second system that was presented in the hall. And this is the third system that was presented in the hall. We recorded measurements and audio files using between amongst others this artificial head from uh, Neumann with uh, microphones where the ears are located so we could really get very close to the human hearing experience in the hall. This is a summary of some measurement results that we have recorded. Uh, the first line is the speech intelligibility the mean and the standard deviation, you see the systems A, B and C. The green color means that there's, that system was the best one and the orange is the second and the red is the third in rating, rating for the speech intelligibility and the other values. The Deutlichkeit D50 is a coefficient between the direct sound and the reverb sound that is being excited inside the hall by the system and the sound pressure level, the third group of values, is how loud the sound gets in the space, which is not a really a problem for those systems, but we wanted to have it evenly distributed inside the space. So nobody has it much louder than another person sitting in the, in the hall. And you see the points at the, at, the, at the bottom, the one to six, six is excellent and one is very poor. And you see we have a, the winner, in fact, is system A in this particular slide. Then there is a second scenario we had, besides doing the measurements, we had people, persons, uh, women, men from all different walks of life uh, inside the hall, uh, personnel of the KKL, but also random people that were uh, available and ready to and willing to do this. 
uh, sitting inside the hall, a couple of dozen, a lot of people, and judging the sound systems by a questionnaire that we have prepared. Uh, you see some of the of the qualitative values that we had come up with, speech intelligibility, not just a measurable quantity, but also a perceivable quality inside the, the space. And the questionnaires were also rated using the same rating system, one to six. And you see that we have the same uh, uh, winner than we had in the measurements. So it means that the, either the measurements were okay or the questionnaires were good. Uh, they're in line, they're coherent. This, this we observe often that uh, when, you, when you ask people what do they perceive as the best, it's also in measurement quantities when you, when you uh, analyze them carefully, uh, it's, it's in line, it's coherent. So system A was uh, chosen and uh, at the end of the day that was installed and again this is comparing a point source system which radiates sound to all surfaces uh, equally to a line array system which has a way more tailored and targeted sound profile it shoots energy only to the audience and not much to the ceiling and not much to the floor where there's no people sitting uh, so we have a the, as a summary, we have the resulting numbers here. The existing, the old uh, point source system, we had an STI of 0.64. The new line array targeted projection has an STI of 0 0.70, meaning we have a delta, a, a, a better sound a speech intelligibility trend uh, number of 0 0.06 plus. And that concludes the series of the videos. We had learned that in the case study one with the Zurich airport, we had achieved a higher speech intelligibility just by putting absorption inside the space. And we had selected a particular absorption percentage that fitted the budget and the space and also the speech intelligibility. And in this particular case with the concert hall, we could demonstrate that targeted more directional sound actually helps to improve speech intelligibility. Both things combined, uh, we could have done that, dampened the concert hall. <laughs> That's not really what the owner wants to do because for acoustical concerts that we need the, re the reverb. And in the airport, uh, we could have put more directional loudspeakers, uh, but that's also very expensive and uh, uh, more directivity was not really an option. In this particular case. This concludes this, the videos. I thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you another time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.